This is Twit. So Bruce Schneier decided to weigh in. Uh, of course, we all know Bruce. He's a well-known cryptography and privacy guys. He uh, he blogged and he begins his blog posting, which was titled "Me on COVID-19 Contact Tracing Apps," by writing. He starts, I was quoted in BuzzFeed. And then he quotes himself being quoted. <laughs> BuzzFeed said, quoting him, my problem with contact tracing apps is that they have absolutely no value. <clears throat> Bruce Schneier, a privacy expert and fellow at the Berkman Klein Center for Internet and Security at Harvard University, told BuzzFeed's BuzzFeed News, again, quoting, I'm not even talking about the privacy concerns. I mean the efficacy. Does anybody think this will do something useful? Um, he says, this is just something governments want to do for the hell of it. To me, it's just techies doing techie things because they don't know what else to do. Okay, that was the quote from BuzzFeed. Then he elaborated in his blog posting. He says, I haven't blogged about this. Because I thought it was obvious. But from the tweets and emails I've received, it seems not. This is a classic identification problem. And efficacy depends on two things. False positives and false negatives. So then he has two bullet points. False positives first. False positives. Any app will have a precise definition of a contact. Let's say it's less than six feet for more than 10 minutes. The false positive rate is the percentage of contacts that don't result in transmissions. This will be because of several reasons. One, the app's location and proximity systems based on GPS and Bluetooth just aren't accurate enough to capture every contact. Two, the app won't be aware of any extenuating circumstances like walls or partitions. And three, not every contact results in transmission. The disease has some transmission rate that's less than 100%. And he says in parens, and I don't know what that is. Then for false negatives, this is the rate the app fails to register a contact when an infection occurs. This will be because of several reasons. One, Errors in the app's location and proximity systems, which, is, of course, was the same as the first one. Two, transmissions that occur from people that don't have the app. He says even Singapore didn't get above a 20% adoption rate for their app. He says, and three, not every transmission is a result of that precisely defined contact. He says the virus sometimes travels further. And of course, we also know that it also uh, can be transmitted through surface contact, not person to person. Anyway, he said, assume you take the app out grocery shopping with you and it subsequently alerts you of a contact. What should you do? It's not accurate enough for you to quarantine yourself for two weeks. And without ubiquitous, cheap, fast and accurate testing, you can't confirm the app's diagnosis. So the alert, he says, is useless. Similarly, you take the app out grocery shopping and it doesn't alert you of any contact. Are you in the clear? No, you actually have no idea if you've been infected. The end result is an app that doesn't work. People will post their bad experiences on social media and people will read those posts and realize that the app is not to be trusted. That loss of trust is even worse than having no app at all. He says it has nothing to do with privacy concerns. The idea that contact tracing can be done with an app and not human health professionals is just plain dumb. Okay, and of course, that's Bruce Schneier, who's... Mr. Tech and crypto and, and so forth. So that's how he ends his blog. But but we and we've talked about this. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're trying to just bring the on are not the contagion rate below one. Right. So even Correct. if it was 50 percent reliable, it would have value, wouldn't it? Or maybe I don't. Yeah, understand it. Well, so 
for, for me, the numbers out of New York are really fascinating because they're still in – I mean they have been from the beginning in as, as stringent a lockdown as possible with – Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York State, spending an hour every day sort of as the father confessor. I mean, just like, you know, really urging people to stay at home, stay away from other people. And they've with that, they've only managed to get it barely below 1.0, which to me is fascinating. I mean, just, you know, independent of what we would think. In part of the state, it's 0.8. They've calculated, and I think in the north, it's 0.9. But, I mean, they're doing everything they can. And the epidemiologists see that, and that's why what we're now hearing is everyone who's informed expects we're going to see a significant increase in cases about two weeks from now because this thing just wants to get transmitted. I mean, it is trying too hard. Um, anyway, there was an, an interesting thing that, that he also said that I thought was interesting. Um, um, at the end of last week, Cuomo explained that the previous day, he was talking about their big project to ramp up human contact tracing, right? Because here's Bruce saying, Forget about the app. You need me- trained medical professionals. So Cuomo is going to do this. Bloomberg is stepping up and he's organizing the project somehow. So he says, he said at the end of last week, he said that the previous day, which was last Thursday, the state identified 4,681 new, brand new cases of coronavirus. And that about the same would be happening again that same day and pretty much every day. He explained that, I mean, I I was amazed he could do this with a straight face. He explained that effective contact tracing required that every one of those 4,681 people be interviewed to determine the identities of everyone they had come into physical proximity to over the past 14 days and then they're going to be telling people you got to keep a journal of everywhere you go and what you do and who you see and who you meet for two weeks but, well well not, and, and not just if you're infected but everybody because you never know you when know. you're going to suddenly yeah. be tested positive right and, and said and then all of those people all of the people who the 4681 people who tested positive on one day came in contact with for the previous 14 days, all of them need to be interviewed and perhaps placed into isolation, presumably interviewed and tested and perhaps placed into isolation. 4,681 per day. And then that expands, as I said, to all the people that they came in contact with and that has to happen every single day. <laughs> I heard Does anyone Mike DeWine, believe... the governor of Ohio, yesterday say, hey, we got 1,800 contract tracers. We're in great shape. I don't <laughs> think that's going to do it. I mean, no. And in fact, the most recent estimate is that we will need 300,000 human contact wow. tracers. Wow. So that'll be good for, um, for unemployment but you have to train them up. But the point is, Leo, 4,681 people in one state every single day then interviewed to determine everyone they may have had contact with for the previous two weeks and then interview all of them. It's not possible. And so that's my point, is that this thing has escaped. It is out there. And... And my feeling is it doesn't matter at all when we so-called reopen. It's how we reopen that matters. And from a standpoint of the damage we're doing to the economy, the sooner the better. But 
as you, you, we were just talking, I guess it was before we began recording about how you're out now in Petaluma and people are not wearing face protection. They're not covering their faces. So, so I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that we, we absolutely need to continue to be careful, but that you do as much commerce as you can while being as careful as you can be, because this thing appears to be insistent upon finding people to infect. I mean, if, if with New York doing everything they possibly can, they've barely managed to sneak it below an R naught of one, then the moment they relax restrictions, it will go above one. And then we risk having this thing, you know, get away from us again. I mean, this is, it's a challenge. So anyway, I thought it would be interesting to share Bruce's sentiments about software. You know, my feeling is it'll be fun to play with. I'll install it. I'm not worried about <laughs> privacy, <laughs> privacy concerns, right. you know, and if it goes off and sounds the alarm, it's like, oh, okay, that's it. And, and the problem is it doesn't tell you who you got it from. It just tells you sometime in the last two weeks, uh, somebody who tested positive was near enough to you that you exchanged Bluetooth tokens and good luck to you. Yeah. <laughs>